This is Rod Kusinen, Spoolman for RISC on October 1st, 2014. All times on the chart are Central Standard Time. Did you see the trend reversal coming this morning? If you were watching the premium, you should have. We're going to show you where we expected the market to drop to as well as why we call this a trend reversal. Now the premium certainly gave you a heads up that the market was going to move back up to 53.25 but this also constitutes a trend reversal and we'll show you why in just a minute. At 9.01 a.m. this morning right after the announcement we had a new high on the premium for the morning thus far. This was a naked bar forecasting return to the price of 53.25. 53.25. When the market moved down to hit the low at 46.50, which was on your radar, We expected the possibility of a bounce right there. It in fact occurred. And right at the low here, we were above the lower threshold on the low bar of the premium and a nice basis on which to expect this change in market direction. Now we rally up and we almost make it just on practically the first move up but it fails. It fails. You can see that the highs of the uh, uh, spoos made it up to 52, uh, 75, 52, 75 here. And look at the highs of the premium. There was just nothing there to hold it up. And the second attempt didn't get didn't get above the upper threshold either. And so back she comes. Well. That was a little scary, to be candid. A little bit scary. And going along right in here was a little bit tricky. We'll show you how you could have avoided getting stopped out on that move uh, down to 46, no, 47. All right, it went down to a low 47 on that move. So. Why bounce at that point? Hmm. We'll show you that too. Okay, so there was your nice move predicting a trend reversal and an, expect, uh, an expectancy that this, this big bar here that took place at 840 would probably, yeah, I was expecting, yeah, we'd probably move back up in this direction because that was such, such a massive drop all of a sudden. And usually the the retracement is going to move pretty close to the high there. I didn't really expect it to go quite this high. But in any case, that's what happened. So, first of all, why do we call this a trend reversal? Our primary indicator that we use to determine the trend will typically change its direction if we have had a move of at least six to six and a half points. So we could forecast that there was going to be a trend reversal, not just a change in direction, but a full-scale trend reversal based upon the spread between the high here at 53.25 and the low at 46.50 because to move back to 53.25 which is of course what the premium was predicting we'd have to move at least six and a, hang on let's see here okay so yeah we'd have to move just under seven points six and three quarters points 
to get us back to where the premium said we were going to go. That's a trend change. That's enough to make a change in the trend. So on the first attempt up, we fail. And you can see how that was coming due to the fact that the uh, highs of the premium right at the high of that move were now below our upper threshold. And down she came. And when you were, if, if you were, if you got into the trade here, that was a little scary because you likely got stopped out if you were at least uh, trailing your stop to some degree. And then it was kind of questionable where you're going to get back in. We'll show you exactly how you could have made that move in just a minute. But she clearly went right back up and hit the uh, target where the premium said the market would move back to. And with that thought in mind, we're still in a, uh, a positive trend up and I anticipate new highs uh, forthcoming. All right, why was 46.50 on your radar? It should have been. Here's why. There's your point of control. Uh, excuse me, pardon me, your, your low value area. Right in here, 4650. It's right there. So as you as the market continued to drop, you could expect that it might, it doesn't always happen, but that it might drop into this area and bounce off. It comes right down to it and bounces. Now, the Dow, when we came down to that point, was kind of in no man's land. The Dow came down to 16,862, and uh, this line here, let's move this over, there you go, at uh, 859.48 is right where that uh, low volume area is about to get penetrated into. And it doesn't even make it quite that far. It comes down to 62.86 and bounces because the smooths came down to that low value area and it bounced first. So Dow didn't get any lower. That can happen. And obviously it did. Now let's go back and take a look at this move back in here. It was a little tricky, but with the right indicators, it wasn't all that difficult to read. Now let's first of all take a look at what the market was doing when it hit the low at 46.50. Now there's our lower threshold and you can see how the spoos came right down to the lower value area. The lows of the premium are now above, they're above the lower threshold and boom, there you go. Nice opportunity for a little long. We'll show you something else on the Dow in just a minute, but what we wanted to focus on is when we came back down. All right, this is where it got a little tricky. Because right here, all right, as we were coming back down, well, let's, let's, let's just trace this, okay. We're, we're, we're moving back down, all right. And you're, you're kind of watching this line here as you're, uh, uh, low, val low value area. So when the market moved down to this bar here at 933.30, look at the low here. Look at the low on the premium. The premium was just below the low threshold area of negative 804. It dropped to negative 811. Furthermore, you had a gap there. 
All right, the low, keep in mind, in an electronic market, the open of the current bar should be equal to the close of the previous bar. It wasn't. You had a gap. So if you were smart, you thought close, you thought this ought to come back down. Not only was the premium lower than the threshold, but you have a gap there. So you would have expected this to come back down. It does. When it does, now once again, the lows of the premium, all right, lows of the premium are below the lower threshold. So that should continue to drop. And on this bar at 936, we're still below the lower threshold, negative 8.21. This is going to continue to come down. So it does right here. And that's where you're saying, aha, good time to go long. And if you had, and I must admit, I was about ready to do it myself. You might have put a stop in that got you stopped out and frustrated and you know how that goes. Anyway, what could have helped you? Well, look at our indicators here. This indicator here, the green and the magenta, is the premium. This too is on the premium. We use two different settings on the premium to get a good clear picture of what's happening. We like to use the threshold lines as well, but the cyan and yellow bars is the ticky shown here. So, okay, what was happening to the ticky here and here? Right there where you're saying, ah, Let's go long. Look at where the ticky is. Okay. The ticky is continuing to drop and it has not turned. And right in here, okay, if you had gone long right in here and you were watching the ticky, and you should be, the ticky is still short. And down she goes, and the ticky doesn't turn until right there at the bottom. And when you finally do reach the bottom here, the lows are above the lower threshold. The lows, of the, the lows of the spoos correspond to these bars on the premium and were higher than the lower threshold. And everything is turning green right in here, and up she goes. Right back to 53.25 up here. And as you can see, nothing's holding you up. So, boom, down she comes again, at least for a little while. Now, some other things that were going on as this market moved back to 47, two ticks above the low. You could see uh, the premium being uh, divergent. Just look at the wave. Compare the amplitude of the low on the, on the premium here compared to over here. The ticky is moving up. There's some divergence there. So that's rather clear, but it's even more clear right here on this particular indicator. You can see the divergence. Higher low here, lower low here. All right. Now let's look at the same on the Dow. And the Dow is very important. Uh, I gotta move the. Hang on. Get our global indicator in here. There we are.
Now it's really interesting here. Is the Dow hits the low for the day. Dow hits the low for the day right in here. Spoos hit a higher low. So the spoos do not hit while well, the Dow is now hitting a higher low. And look at our indicators down here. Here's your low. And the lows on this first set of indicators are higher lows. So you see the divergence there. Okay? Higher lows on the indicator, lower lows on the Dow. You see it here, and you see it here uh, on this indicator. Don't see it here, but that's okay. You see higher lows showing up here, lower low here. So, point of the matter, that divergence on the lower low is giving you a heads up that we may be expected to see the market turn at that point. Similarly, just just follow. Uh, just look at the the indicators here. Let me let me pull off pull off a trend line so that you know exactly what we're referring to here. Let's change the color on that. So here's your high, right in here. We've got higher highs here, but obviously much lower highs here. Same is true here. So these lower highs also confirm this turn. Same over here, okay? There's your high in here, and you can see that, and maybe not real well on this screen, but the higher we go on this indicator, it changes colors so that it, it gives us a visual confirmation of whether or not the indicator itself is divergent. When this color turns to dark blue, it's, it's, it's about as high as it normally goes. So here compared to here, this is a higher high on the spoos, a lower high here, and then finally right here we go up a little bit higher and you can see a big divergence. Divergence is your friend. Big divergence there, okay? So yeah, expecting the market to turn makes good sense. So let's go live. Let's just take a look at what's happening right now. Now, we've moved up all the way. Let's go back to the uh, ES. So we make it all the way up to a high here of um, 57.25. 57.25. We've moved back to as low as 51.50. Okay, now what did we say earlier about trend reversal? A move of six points or better is enough to change the trend. Obviously as we move back to 51 and a quarter, if 
from 57 and a quarter. Okay, there's your six points. We could be at another trend reversal. Now, was there anything going on that was indicative of that change? And the answer, based upon the premium, is no. We don't have any naked bars here that was indicating that this was going to change direction that significantly. But now you see that that has, in fact, occurred. We're now over that six point limit that we were talking about previously. But there was nothing on the radar here from the standpoint of the premium that was forecasting this change. Okay? Nothing at all. All that we do see is divergence as we're moving up into this high. So it stood to reason that as the market continued to rally up here and hit this high and come back down, you'd be wanting to go long in here. Now you don't get very far. And you notice that now we become overbought. Okay, right in here. We're overbought and the market begins to drop. That's also a little bit of a heads up. We have equal highs in here. Look at where the premium is here. Okay. Here's your premium high. Here's equal high on the spoos. Premium is much, much lower. Corresponding drop. And down she comes, and now we have, in fact, a trend reversal again. So I'm going to show you on our primary chart where we see this, where we see evidence of a trend reversal. So I'm going to bring this chart right over so that you can see it. So here we are at the high of the morning. And you can see we're at a value of zero on our primary indicator. So we're definitely short at the open. No two ways about it. Right in here is where that forecast of a trend reversal takes place about 9 o'clock. And here we hit the low. Here we are. This indicator is now beginning to slope up. So if you, if you had gone long here, this was telling you you're safe. This, this should be, we should be able to pull off a long trade to get back up to the high where the premium forecasted we should go. And in fact that succeeds. But now as it drops again, you see how the primary indicator has changed in its slope once again? And it changed its slope right as we came down here to the low at a right, right around 51 from a high of around 57. So there's your six points. That's just enough to cause the slope of this indicator to change direction. So now you're short. So what are we, what are we doing? We're going back to short trades. We're looking for the contrarian. We're looking for overbought conditions. So we're going to take a couple of examples of this before we conclude our video today. Right now, we're short. We, were, we, we had a long expected trend reversal, which happened. It failed 
to hit a new high for the day. And we have another trend change here. So this is clearly a retracement, and your lows are not going to be way back, or pardon me, your highs are not going to be way back here. That looks like where the high of the day likely is going to be, unless we get another trend reversal. But right now, we're short, and that means we're getting we're going back to the low of the morning if the indicators continue to remain negative. So with this thought in mind, we're going to give you a live example of how we handle the contrarian. Now, here's our primary indicator. This next chart here shows that we're still in a negative trend, and right in here you see an overbought condition. Right there at the top, we're overbought. Okay. Now, the thing that's going to make this a bit difficulty is we have a point of control right in here. But this is where you'd want to be looking to take a short trade. And we have a little divergence right in here as well, as just shown by the indicator. So down we're going. And as you saw that uh, line show up here, that's just, that, that's, that's real time. That's how fast our indicators will show a divergence. So down we're going. Now let's look at where the premium was right here. Okay. Because this is this is the way we do this. As soon as we're overbought, that's the contrarian. We're now going to look for the look at the premium and see precisely where to take this trade. Now the time on this is 1036. I'm going to move this chart away. And here you are. Now let's look very carefully at that. Watching the premium. Here's where the premium is beginning to change direction, right in here. But as you as you look at the raw data, and that's what we want our traders to do, watch the raw data. We come up here to this high. Here's the duplicate indicator on the screen showing that we've been overbought in here. So we're looking to take a long trade. We want some divergence. But in this case, we never even make it to the upper threshold. And now our indicators are short. We see that happen again right in here. So whether you pulled off the trade here, that might have been a little difficult if you were just following the indicators themselves. But you would have liked to get into a short trade right in here, if not right in here. And it's happening again right now as we speak. We're right back into that same area of 52.50, 52.75. Okay. So look at where we were here, 52.75. We, we just hit it again, 52.75 here, and look at where the premium is. The highs of the bar on the premium are barely above fair value. That's a very good indication that the price here is going to drop. But as we mentioned, 
we've got a point of control in here. That's going to make this a little bit difficult because we've we got a lot of traders here wanting to buy into this. But our indicators show that we're short, we're not long. So that's where the struggle is, is coming from. But we should see this drop. Now in in real time, which we're which is what's happening right now, we want to be watching the Dow as well. So we look at both of these charts. Okay, this is where we are right now. This is live. Right? And just as we were dropping into the point of control here, we're we're dropping into the uh, low value area on the Dow, so there's there's a quite a quite a struggle here, and look at the lows here. See our lows, all right? So we're we're having to talk about this uh, in real time. See the lows on the Dow. See the divergence here. There's there's support for buying into this. There's definitely some support here. I'm just trying to draw this. There we go. There's a divergence here on the Dow. So that generally indicates, yeah, we're going to be buying into this. By the same token, we come right back up here to 53 and <laughs> look at the highs of the premium. We're again in an overbought condition right in there. All right. Now where would we take this short trade? Well we talked about taking it here, we talked about taking it here. It's ticked up just a little bit higher here. That's all fine and well according to this. However, if you look at the Dow Look at the Dow here. In a situation like this, it might we, we might be better off waiting for more divergence to appear on the highs of the Dow. So I'm not saying that taking a short trade in here is wrong. You can see again, whoops, I just moved our fair value line, didn't mean to do that. You could take it in here. But we're going to have to break through in a meaningful way that point of control, and we're going to have to break through the low value area. Ah, there, there it is. There it is. It's got to break through for this conti to, to, can, to continue to go down. And you see where the lows of the premium are right in here. That low bar on the premium, way below the low threshold level. We should continue to drop. This is going to break through 73. Yep, there we go. There we go. All right. Boom. Nice. Okay. So we just gave you a live demonstration of how, of how we look at overbought conditions on the premium, the contrarian. To take the short trade. A little iffy in here. Heads up on the on the Dow. But once again the failure. And and when I say a failure, what I mean by that is that this typically, if the market's gonna rally up and, and sustain that rally, the highs on the premium have to get above the threshold level. If they fail to do that, then this market's coming back down. So just as the lows of the premium now considerably were considerably less than the low threshold level, that's an indication that the market will continue to drop. Now we're coming down into the low of the day on the Dow. This is the low of the day on the Dow. Look at the lows on the premium. Okay, 
we're below the threshold level right there at 49. So that's forecasting that this should continue to drop. However, we're at the almost, almost at the low of the day on the Dow. So to get a good idea as to whether or not that's a, that, that number on the Dow that we just hit is realistically a low, let's look at a calculation. Let's look at a calculation here. All right, by the way, before I move off of this, the uh, we had a couple of lines preset here. This calculated low from the uh, from the previous day using the 1.5 standard deviation off of the initial balance from the high and the low of the previous day projected the 46. Uh, 50 number that we hit earlier. We want to do the same thing uh, with the Dow. So let's take a look at that. Here's our indicator. Okay. Not much. All right, let's go back to the initial balance calculations. Okay. Here's the Dow. Okay, that's just barely, barely dropping below the initial balance with the 1.5 standard deviation number set. Let's look at it here. Takes us down to about 796, so it's going to break below the 16,800 level before it hits that first standard deviation. Let's look at the VIX as well. Whoa. Ooh. Well, now that's interesting. All right, let's take a real close look at this. We're short, but None of the indicators. Here's the ES. We haven't gone into, we haven't broken below the initial balance. The Dow has broken below the initial balance. The YM has broken below the initial balance. The INX has not. And the VIX is contrary. The VIX is way down here. All right. The low of the VIX was associated with the retracement level here. Okay. The low of the VIX was in association with this retracement, and now we're moving back up. The initial balance on the VIX was over here. That was your initial low. So this didn't quite make it to that uh, first standard deviation here, and we would we would be anticipating that the VIX is going to be moving up, not down, due to the fact that we are in a negative trend right now. But the VIX has a long way to go to get back up to the initial balance line. So we're just going to have to give this time. But right now, this, this looks a little hairy. We've got a negative trend, but we aren't getting any lower. We've gotten into a higher low here.
and the market is moving back up. So this is this is we showed you how to get into the short trade here, which made money, but we didn't continue to drop as would be expected. At least not yet. This is now retracing again. But there's really nothing here that uh, is, is telling us that we are not short, other than the fact that the VIX is behaving a little contrary. The VIX ought to be way up here, closer to the initial balance line, just like it is here. But as you can see, it's not. And therefore, seeing the, uh, the market moving back up is not surprising, but it is not helping any short trade that was taken up here. So we have a little bit of a problem. We could continue to move back up a bit. So let's go back. All right. So right in here, as we drop below the low value area and hit the hit the low of the almost almost. Well, I'm sorry. That was we did go into a new low for the day, into 59. At that particular moment, lows of the premium were at the threshold line. And up we go again. Lots of volatility here. Now, we, we mentioned that the, the, the Dow here, it's, it's kind of in no man's land. 59 for the low, 859. Look at this particular uh, composite profile. 59 is, is down here. And there's there's you know there's nothing here there's nothing there's not nothing on this particular chart that suggests this is a area of support at least that's from August but we also need to look at the bigger picture Right in here, okay, right there, you see where the drop in volume is? Market doesn't want to go down there, at least not right now. So this is an area where we might, we may have expected the Dow to find some support, right? before it drops off into this next area of low volume. And since we have lower volume here than we do here, let's just get the pointer. Lower volume right in here than we do right in here. It's not surprising that we might be trying to move right back up into this area of 76, and about 75. 875. Got to fill in that low volume area in here. So we could be spending some time here for a while as we uh, move back and forth over that area. So once again, keep in mind around 875, and here we are low value area is set to 873, so a little higher than that. So short trades are going to be tough. They're going to be tough right now. We didn't hit a new low on the smooths. We hit a new low on the Dow. 
and an area, uh, a, a clear area of support for the Dow. So that little bounce there could have, could, could be seen as predictable. But here again, where do you short this? Now we said before that shorting it right in here made some sense according to the according to our indicators all right we want to short the contrarian now as we moved up here from that low to 5150 we were overbought okay we were overbought here and we're still overbought here we've been overbought right in this area of, of the point of control. But as we mentioned in, in other videos, when you're, when you're in a short and you're moving up to the point of control, that's an area where you can expect the market would short. But you also need to be take, paying attention to where the Dow is. And we just showed you that the Dow was going to move back into that area of 74, 75, which it did, all right? It just did that, and then failed to get any higher right in here, okay? That being associated with this move up just above the point of control. So, so with that being, uh, uh, this move right in here, with that being associated with lower highs on the premium, yeah, taking another short right in here. That's where, that's where this is suggesting that that trade should take place. And we're below the uh, fair value area, so this should continue to drop. All that having been said, composite profile showed low volume up there at 75. So until we get that filled up, that's the way I look at it. It's, it's low volume. We want to fill in the, the, the area of low volume, if at all possible. If that doesn't occur, this could continue to rally up and, and, and try to do that. We're getting a little bit of a drop in here but we have not seen the premium drop below the low threshold line. It needs to do that for this to continue to go down. There's nice divergence here on the uh, on this move up on the Dow. You see the highs on our indicators over here, our lower highs. Nice divergence in here. So hopefully this is going to start to move back down and we'll get into an oversold condition uh, a bit later. So let's go back to our composite just to see what happened. See if there was enough volume to make a difference at 75. It doesn't look that way. All right, we still have low volume in here, right in there. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if we move back up. Now, the thing that's going to that, that's going to really be the game changer here is if we break below the low of the day on the Dow. Low of the day, 8.59. All right, let's get that exact. And we have low volume again here, and even much lower volume down in here. So breaking that low, you can expect another ricochet if we get down to 838. And if we break below that, 
she's gonna start to tumble boom, 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 boom. all the way down to around 797 so right now you gotta break the low of the day next stop right around here All right, so we did get a lower low on the premium here, broke through the lower threshold area. We're going to continue to drop now. Looks like we're going to make it all the way back down to this area uh, at 8.59. It looks that way at least. So we're going to give this a couple of minutes. We're going to put this on pause and come back when we have something more to say because right now the fight is going to be right at the low of the day by way of pattern before I, before I stop here but by way of pattern this is a red day down that means that the lows of the day are likely to be in the last half hour unless we get a trend reversal lows of the day should be in the last half hour. We don't have anything forecasted on the premium to suggest that we're going to go back up. That's already happened. So at this particular moment, lows of the day should be in the last half hour. Now, see how our indicator here just became overbought right there at the top, hit 100 corresponds with this point here. Look at the premium. Highs of the premium dropping below below uh, dropping below fair value. Yeah, nice opportunity for a short right in there. Profitable short. Okay, we're at the testing ground here, 59. Just dropped to 58. Watch this number. We are not at new lows on the spoons. Our low was at 46.50. Now, in all fairness, we went lower on the Dow. We did not go lower on our indicators here as of yet but we are breaking into new lows up. There we are, look at the premium. Higher lows. Lows at or above the threshold line. I mean, buying going on in, in here once again. So there does seem to be some support right in there at 50, that 59, 58 level on the down. Fifty-eight twenty-three. Let's move this down just a bit. Doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense to me. We've got some volatility, no, no question about that. This is just bouncing right back up. But at this point, it looks like your best option is to scalp any overbought condition, any contrarian. Nice move down, but we found support here. Boom, she comes back up. And where did we go back to? 875. That same area of low volume on the Dow. And moved up to the point of control <laughs> on the spoons. <laughs> oh, the fight. This is always fun. 
but you are yeah you do have an overbought condition in here right but if I was playing this game right now which I'm not um, the what I would be looking for to be a, a real good basis on which to short this since since that area at around 75 on, on the Dow seems to be an area that needs more activity before we can expect the uh, spoos or them to really drop. We'd want to see okay, here's that area right there at 80 at uh, 75 see the low volume area it's got to move as high as okay, I'm going to really expand this out to get a real good picture okay. so the low is at around very close to 874 so it's going to spend a little time. It's going to spend a little time here. And what I'm going to do to show you what we mean by filling up the volume, that low volume area has a low right in there. Okay. So watch the volume begin to fill up in this area. Okay. I would expect that to happen. And we'll come back and take a look at that. But here again, we bounced right off of it. Okay. Let's analyze this again. What I was I, I alluded to this before. What I was trying to say is that as the market moves back to that area of low volume on the Dow, we'd want to see our indicators divergent at that point to make a, a, a good successful short trade. Now the short trades are still happening, don't get me wrong. You can see why as you look at the, uh, the premium. Premiums are not getting higher than the threshold area and down we come. Now we have finally dropped below the low of the day on the Dow. That's a pretty good indication that this thing is going to, to to really drop. And look at where the premium just went, below the threshold level. Where, hmm. It this this is yeah. It looks to me like we're gonna we're gonna get the drop. We should go all the way back down to our point of. Um, That is to say, that uh, uh, low value area on the S and P at 46.50, because we're dropping now clearly below the area of support. Look at the big picture here. Okay, here's where we are right now, right around 52. And see how the volume is beginning to fill in this area. So, I'm expecting at least 839 out of this drop. See how the Dow as it came into this low, we have this divergence again. You see it on the indicators. There's your low, lower low on the Dow, higher low on the indicators. Up she goes again. Now I don't think we're going to get as high as we did over here. That would be a little surprising to me. I think we've been there, done that. But we could get back to, to the low value area here at 864 before we see the next 
contrarian. Oh, and incidentally, when we moved up to the point of control at 5175 here, you see how our indicator right there hit the red line? That's a real good indication, real good indication that that is a high probability short trade. But what we didn't see, we didn't see it on the Dow. All right, there was no significant divergence in here. There was a little bit, all right? Look at this high compared to this high. A little bit of divergence. Not as much as I would typically want to see. But this is clearly overbought. And our indicators are all going negative right in here. So we might expect, might expect that the Dow will move into that area of 864. We'll watch for divergence there again before the next contrarian. But that having been said, whoops, we are overbought, as you can see from this indicator here. Now that that would suggest yes taking a short trade on this divergence here might work. It might work. I would consider that to be just a little bit on the risky side. Because I'd rather see the Dow up there close to the uh, low value area. We'll come back. Also, one other thing that I just noticed in here, on this bar right there at 1111, that was a range bar, high of 50 to 25, low of 49.50. Usually, on a bar like that, we're going to see a move back up to at least 50, <laughs> which is what it's doing right now. Yeah. That was a range bar. We have an indicator that'll tell you where you have range bars. I don't have it turned on right now. But okay, now we're moving back up right to where we kind of thought this might show itself to be. Overbought on the Dow. So right in here, right in there, taking a short trade, okay, right in there, take, take the short trade. This could work. Look at what, look at what's happening, okay, right in here, 50, 50, 25. Right in here, the Dow has moved up into the low value area. Put your indicators here. Pardon me for that noise. Right in here, we have overbought conditions on the Dow. It's hitting 100. Overbought here. Didn't quite make it as high as we did here. Let's look at that closely. 19. Didn't make it. So we have a divergence. And the threshold levels 
didn't even get close, but you have a divergence there. Down she goes. Everything was negative right in there. And that's how we do it. Down she goes. Yeah. Hopefully you're getting the idea. And that low, if it moved into the uh, low value area, to where the premium was, it was below the threshold level. So even though you're getting you're getting a bounce here, understandably because of the um, that price is the low value area. The premium, however, is saying, "Don't worry about it. We're going lower," because those bars on the premium dropped considerably below the low threshold area. So even though that support that's a support line, premium says, "No, we're going lower." All right, now, what about this? Okay, we just said we're going lower, but at the moment, that trade in here, that trade got stopped out based upon this move. Because look at where your premium was. That's a new high for the day. Just to verify that. Wow. Pardon me. Let's just verify that. Let's be sure. No, that's not. That is not a new high for the day. But it's definitely about the threshold area. So what do we do with that? Just going to draw a line here at 75. Right there. Okay. So <laughs> Wow, we're going back up again. And it looks to me like we're going to we're going to exceed that high at 80. Pardon me, at uh, 1951. 50. Because the highs of the premium were above the threshold at that moment. So yeah, you got stopped out here, potentially, with that move up. Because I certainly wouldn't have kept a stop that was more than just a quarter of a point below, uh, pardon me, above the entry. And then moving down to the area of support, with this bar on the premium, I would have moved a stop to at least break even in, in the event that 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 what occurred, in fact, did occur. And as you can see, it did. So right now, there's no trade. You know, it's too choppy. We've got to get back up here before we'd be thinking about taking a short trade. Why? Look closely. All right? There's your high. 5150. Where is the premium? That bar of the premium is slightly above the threshold level. I would be well, wait a second here, wait a second. 5150, make sure this didn't hit 5150. No, it didn't. No. 
with this bar on the premium above the threshold level. It says that the probability is, is very high that we will come back to 5150 or better. This bar, of course, suggests we're going to break below the uh, 49, is that what, uh, 48.25, 48.25. So we don't know what's going to happen first to you. That's your problem. So right now there's no trade. Gotten stopped out on any trade that was taken in here. And now it's just a, a waiting game. It kind of looks <laughs> looks like it may have had faked this right out of out of a position. Now you, you could see we were overbought, but it looks to me like that's a that's a heads up that we're if we drop below. 48.25, and that cer certainly looks like we're, we're about to do so, because these bars on the premium were lower as well. Let's just see if they were any lower. Let me let's go to 11.25. Just look at the premium here, 11.25. Yeah, no one knows. So we just broke below that low. So the premium forecast where this was going, and that just that just happened. And we dropped into a new low for the day on the Dow. Every time we get into a new low for the day, this thing begins to rally back up. So lots of volatility. All right, we have to prepare for a possible new. Okay, not sure if we're going to be able to illustrate this for you. No. The bar that is predicting a change back, uh, back up to the 51 and a half is right here. It hits a high. 645. These bars are at 648. They are not higher. But if we get a new premium bar that's above 645, we may have to change the expectation of a rally back to 5150. That's one of our caveats rules. So we'll let you know if that's happening. Unless our threshold levels have changed, and they can, the threshold levels here can change. But right now, I would doubt it. Okay. 
what do we do with this? We'll overbought again right in here. And we saw no, in other words, there was a contrarian right in here, right there. This hit 100. That right now I ha I have to go with my instincts. 6:45. That's forecasting 51.25. It's still forecasting 51.25. I'm not taking a short here. It's too risky. All right, we'll come back in a few minutes. Now, in spite of the volatility here, the uh, premium forecast, the uh, current forecast, is to drop back to the low at 46.75. You see that on this bar. That's a naked bar. 46.75. The difficulty here is to know where to short. And as we mentioned earlier, way back here, at 11.28, this looks like, okay, it looks like we have a naked bar here. All right, there's there's the, the drop. We just hit a new low for the day. So yeah, you were overbought here. Ho 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 who lows. Okay. Looks like we were wrong. Unless this turns out to be a yellow day, but I don't think so. Okay, we just hit a new low. Gang, this, <laughs> oh, frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. Okay, we're getting new lows. We're still looking at a further drop. We're not done here by any stretch. New lows, new lows, new lows on the premium. Our concern, though, however, was that we might be going back to 51 due to that one particular bar. Created has hesitation, at least in my mind. And we haven't had any new bars to reverse that consideration. So the only thing that we might be able to conclude from that is that the threshold level may in fact have changed with a new threshold level being set at that high. which is just barely above it. Threshold at negative 654, that high bar on the premium. Was 601, or pardon me, was uh, 645. That's tricky. I'm going to leave it where it is. I'm not going to change the threshold. But 
until we hit an area of support that it would appear as if continuing to short this in spite of what what this is predicting continuing to short any overbought condition any contrarian is going to continue to make sense because the, the, the trend of the premium is showing that this trend is still down it's not up yet so where's where are we headed okay so you had a contrarian in here you may have another contrarian right in here okay and where's this headed on the spoons 44.75 is an area where I would anticipate we might get some support on the Dow it's down there at 838 and we're very very close on the Dow Okay, we just broke 8.38, we're down to 8.34, we're at 44.50, 44.25, okay, watch the premium. Premiums. See how the premium is above the lower threshold in here, and right at that area here where we figured we might gain some support. 44.75 dropped just a little bit lower than that. Okay. So this is a potential area of support on the on the spoons. Okay, we on the large chart here we saw this area of support right there at around 38. We dropped all the way to 31. And it ricocheted off, but really more likely 28 to, to uh, about 29 here before we would expect a, a more robust type of uh, support level. So we were divergent at the low on the on the spruce. I don't see it on the uh, I don't see it on the Dow. I think we're still going down. Let's see where we are on our static, or pardon me, our um, projections. VIX is coming up. It's a slow death. I would expect this is not going to make it higher than 46, 25.
Well, look at that. Okay. So what do you what what would you understand that bar on the premium is telling you? Okay. What should happen? We should go higher. Should go higher than that. That bar. Let's get rid of this. Okay, there you have it. Forty-six seventy-five. Forty-six seventy-five. Once it hit forty-six seventy-five again. And you looked at that bar on the premium. You're at an equal high, lower high on the spoons, uh, pardon me, lower high on the premium. Therefore, you have a divergence. Now, is it going to move higher? I'm going to say likely it will. Likely it will. I'm going to show you something here that we don't talk too much about. So listen up. Here was your low. Now look at your indicator here on the premium. Look at the, we have a, a positive move up on the premium all the way right into here. And we tagged the high, which is what we expected, and now we have a, uh, a similar move down. This is like one cycle. Okay, From the low to the high is one cycle. And now we move down again. Typically, we'll go at least two cycles before any move up is over. Okay? At least two cycles. This was the first cycle. We should go two cycles. So I said, is that the high? I doubt it. Why? Because this was only one cycle. And we usually go two. Quite often three. Sometimes even more than that. And so we're back into the next cycle up. Not as much strength on the premium, however. And forecast of a drop back to the low here. 45.25. There's your bar. It's telling you that. So this second move up, all right, where we go a little bit higher, all right, could be all... 46.75, made it up to 46.75 again, and now you see we're lower on the premium. So here, on this contrarian, right there, is where you want to consider shorting this. It still might go up one more time. But that, that's where your short would normally be taken right back up at 46.75 with a corresponding drop in the premium and the ticky. You can see it. There's where you're going to take that short. It's pretty interesting. And there's your corresponding drop back to 45.25. Is the premium lower than the threshold level? Boy, it's really, really close. Really little. Very, very close.
All right, well, this is just about as much time as we have for our discussion uh, today. I'm going to give this just a couple of more minutes because we've been at this for over an hour and a half right now into our demo. And the forecast at the moment is still for the lows of the day to take place in the last half hour. And so that means that since the low thus far was at 44 and a quarter, and we already hit that, we could have all sorts of volatility between now and the last half hour, although it doesn't look like we're going to get big moves, although that may happen, but it doesn't look like it right now. So if the low at 44.25 has happened already in the morning, the afternoon low should exceed 44.25, and where might that low be? Well, let's go over here to our composite chart. And we broke below this level at 44.75. It's going to seek out the area of lowest volume, which is down here at around 42. I can get it around 42.75. And let's see where our standard deviations are. All right, this is way below, way below 42. This line is more like 38. Very difficult to anticipate a, a, a drop to that level. And the reason I'm going to say that I'm very iffy on that much of a drop, only because the VIX is is contrary. The highs of the VIX, which occurred during the initial balance here, were way up there at 17.52. We're hitting new lows now, and the VIX is at a lower high. VIX is inversely related to the spoofs. So it's, this is a difficult uh, call to make. Based upon pattern, based upon pattern, the VIX ought to get back to at least the point of control. Uh, pardon me, pardon me. Terminology, the uh, initial balance. So we ought to see the VIX going back up to 17.52. Now, based on the movement of the spoos, yes, that could possibly bring us back as far as that 38 level that's being projected. And that's all you. I mean, that's just the that's the math. The math says 38 and a half, roughly, 38 and 3 quarters. That's where the math says we're going to go. But when you look on the profile chart, 38, let's see where that is. Okay, that's in this area of low volume right in here. Yeah, that's certainly possible. I want to take one last big picture of our profile. This profile was run on the 23rd of July. Let's look at a bigger profile. It takes us back to May. That number at 3850 still looks very good. If we go back much further than that, I'm going to have to recalculate. So let me do that. All right. So yes, indeed, we have low volume there, right at around 38 and a half. Okay. 
that's that's very very possible both the mathematical calculations and the volume chart both agree with that so low of the day 3850 right in that neighborhood and 46 we just hit 46 and a quarter we've got a uh, resistance line there at 46.25 so we may be coming back down after that yeah right up to that area of resistance at 46.25 and where did we go we went up to 46.75 and we were into the contrarian again as shown here nice opportunity to short that lower highs on the premium nice divergence still all below the threshold level so there's another short right in there. Now there is a just a heads up on the on that move. Look at where we were on the Dow at that point. There's no divergence in the Dow. So you couldn't have seen it. You couldn't have seen that drop on the Dow. There was no divergence here, but there certainly was here on the uh, on the premium. All right, so we're going to leave our our uh, video at this point. We may come back for a recap, uh, but it's been uh, a good way to train your eye to see what we look at, see how we watch the market live and we should continue to see a drop look again at the premium here 44.25 that's the low of the day premium says no it's not <laughs> okay because we're way below the threshold level so any contrarian here we're shorting so that's the idea and we'll conclude this video at that point we'll do a, a, a wrap up uh, after the close so look for that uh, further video later on today this is Rod Kusin and Spooman for Risk